Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or morning, depending on when you are. Let me just want to welcome you on another MyQ webinar. Within this one, we'll be focusing on the MyQ Enterprise Scanning and all the options it offers to you and your customers. As always, I would like to encourage you to use the Q&A which you can find under the icon, which is probably in the top right corner of your screen. Every question you will ask, I will try to answer at the end during the Q&A session, or if it doesn't fit, it will definitely be answered within the document, which is then shared with all the members of our partners community. So let me officially start this webinar. And again, thank you for being here with us today. Today's topic is the MyQ Enterprise Scanning and the subtitle complex does not mean complicated. Now this might uh, be a little bit too technical comparing to the previous one, but uh, there is a purpose behind that. What I would like to show you is all the options MyQ Enterprise Scanning offers you and your customers and how they can benefit from it. And at the same time, I also would like to show you that all the options you will see today are definitely not very hard to set up. So let's get to it. And just for your information, as you've probably already seen here, my name is Michael Demmel and I'm a pre-sales manager and a trainer, and I will guide you through this webinar. As always, we will start with the agenda. And as it was promised, uh, the first part, as always, there will be some MyQ news, starting with the MyQ Roger, something about um, MS Power BI and the Casera Embedded Terminal, followed logically by the main topic, which for today is the MyQ Enterprise Scanning. And what we will be going through, some basic introduction, and then everything you would expect from scanning of MyQ. Now, some basics which you probably already know, but also few things which you might not know, and that is the reason why you're probably joining this webinar. So we will be going through some advanced destination variables, DMS connectors, and other options you can use at your customers. Like I said, this part might be a little bit technical. But there is a purpose behind that, and uh, at the end of that, I will definitely, uh, you know, provide some practical application demonstration. So you will see that all these things I was talking about made sense, and uh, that uh, you know your customers can use them easily. And the last one will be about a special scan commands, which is a really important thing as well. Now then, after we will finish with the main topic, of course, the already announced QA session. So if you have any question, any time throughout the webinar, do not hesitate, use the QA session, and I will try to answer as many questions as possible. And of course, the rest will be answered after the session and available in the partner portal. So let's start with it. First, the expected MyQ news, and the one of the most important news as the one which you've probably already seen on our YouTube channel. And that's our celebration, our celebration of 30 years in the printing industry. That was actually the moment in the past, 30 years ago, when our founders have met at a school and started working on the printing. So this is a great celebration for MyQ. But the important thing is that those who will get the gift are you and your customers. Because for every MyQLX license that you will purchase, you will receive a credit of 30 euros or 30 American dollars for which are valid for the next 30 weeks. And you will be allowed to use them for any MyQ Roger project you're using, the current one or a new one. It's up to you. So like I said, for every MyQLX license purchased, you will get a 30 euro or 30 USD credit you can use on every Mikey Roger project. And now what is new in the Mikey Roger? Because of course, it's not only about this promotion, but also about the new features that are now hitting the market. So let me just quickly speak about the most important highlights. Of course, there's much more, but I will just focus on the most important things. Now, as Mike Roger is a cloud-based solution, it has to be global. So we proudly announced that we now use a new data center in the US. So all the US customers do not have to work with other data center. They can use the one which is there in states. And what it will be about the 
printing solution which works in the cloud if it didn't support the Azure AD and synchronization of all users. So within this new release, you can of course synchronize your users using the Azure AD, and you can also use user aliases provided that your users need them. Like for example, they've got multiple accounts and other options that should be uh, integrated into one account. But that's not all. There are a few more things. The rest is more related to the mobile application. Starting first with the detection using the low frequency Bluetooth. Now, if you're there, if you're using our application with a reader that supports low frequency Bluetooth, you can easily find the closest printer within the office and not only find it and detect how far it is from your mobile phone, but more important, you can also use it to log in into that machine. So when you're approaching it, the machine could be ready for you and you can just release your jobs. Another important thing that's been added to the application as part of the latest release is a full text search. And that's not only that because, you know, it wouldn't be enough. It's all about the management. So you can now go to your uh, cloud storage, manage it. You can uh, get a preview. You can look for a files you need to print and you need to manage. You can, for example, scan a file and immediately get a preview and check it on your screen of your mobile phone. So there are a lot of things. So I would definitely encourage you to, uh, you know, look at your Micro Roger update and check all these nice things that were added. And of course, as our Micro Roger community grows, also, we need to support more languages. So that way, more languages were added to both UI of the tenant and the Micro mobile phone. And of course, that could be a situation that something does not work as you expect, or you're not sure if you are doing it the right way, uh, so your customer can benefit from all the nice features Micro Roger offers them. And for such situations, there is a new online help. So if you're not sure about what you're doing or if something is not working as you expect, use this one to achieve the best possible result. Few more things you can expect. Few more things which were also uh, really anticipated and are needed now hitting the market. And that's the full accounting and reporting for your users and devices, which also means that the ton of counterage monitoring has been included. So just check your machines and the UI of the Roger to get all the details. So that was our first highlight, the Moiki Roger. As you can see, it's a pretty big thing. And of course, you can expect more features to come in the following days. Now, what is the next highlight, next news uh, I would like to share with you? And that is the MyQ Power BI support. Yeah, you probably say, now we know about that. It's already there, so what is new about it? Now, the thing is that uh, the Microsoft Power BI was used and intended to be used with a central server. So if you had a big installation, you can connect the Power BI to your central server and create a lot of reports based on the customer's needs. Now, based on that, there's been a lot of requests from you, from our partner community, to get such an option not only to big installations, but also to those that are only using a standalone. So what is this about is that we now support the Power BI connector also for your standalone installation. Now for the third highlight of today, and that's the Kyocera Embedded. Now, again, You've probably seen that one as part of our previous webinar. But what I mentioned here is that this one is really important because if you would like to get all the details and all the advantages of a new session and of a new architecture, this client is the one for you. So I would definitely recommend you to use this client and most of your installations if you are using the version 8.2 server. Now, maybe an important thing which might not be visible for the first sight is that to be able to use all the advantages of the new architecture client, you will always need the server 8.2. So despite the being called the 8.115 as the version of your counselor client, it requires a server version 8.2. And that's also the last one from today's highlights. So let's now focus on the main topic of today, and that is the MyQ Enterprise Scanning. Now you've probably seen a lot of our materials about 
scanning options of my queue, but I just would like to focus now on what the Enterprise Edition can do on its own without additional connectors, application and stuff. So now this one will be solely about the Enterprise and uh, maybe just you know, to highlight it, it also includes the government and the education because those two additions are just supporting the very same features as the enterprise version does. So what it will be about? It will be about all of the nice scanning workflows where you can get all the scans to all the destinations MyQ is offering you. The important thing is to understand that is that when you're scanning, it never reaches the actual destination directly, but when we are scanning with MyQ, it goes first to the MyQ server and then it's delivered to all the locations. Why is that? Because we can then modify the file, work with it and do all the nice things we do. And uh, what we can do, that's what I'm about to show you as part of this webinar. So focus on three main things. I just would like to highlight them here on the embedded screen. First, pretty quickly about the native scanning you can use on your device, an option which is possible, but not recommended for a common user. You will see why as we will go on. Next part will be the MyQ Easy Scan, the main topic of today's webinar with all its powerful options you can use at your customer. And then there are still few machines which are still good, still can do their job, but you know they are not really following up to the latest technologies. But you still want to use them, or maybe your customers do. I know it's a minor thing, but even these old machines can benefit from all the features of MyQ. So I will just show you a few special commands through which you can control also these devices. And now let's start with the first topic I've mentioned there, the panel scan. Now the panel scan, as if you know, probably now and you'd be definitely now is something that gets you into the native environment of the machine. Now these, you know, all the machines which are now in the market are pretty powerful with a lot of settings, a lot of options, cloud storage connectors, uh, sometimes even with the OCR directly on a the machine. They're pretty powerful. But there is a little struggle and a little problem when you are using a multiple devices in your fleet because most of the customers are not only using one brand, but different brands. The thing is that the common user can then be distracted by too many options or too many different looks how to use the app. And that way, they're wasting their time in standing in front of a machine and looking for the option they need. Not mentioning that this might not be the most secure option of all, especially when it comes to cloud storages. And for that reason, we have uh, invented the Easy Scan. And I will just now show you all the options of the Easy Scan which you can use at your customers. So, what Easy Scan is about? I know most of you are from a party community and you already know all the stuff. So, what new can be? Uh, mentioned during this webinar. Let me show you. I will start from the very basics, which will be this one touch button where the user comes to the machine, inserts the original into the feeder, presses the button, and the rest is done automatically based on a program. Now, what could be the part of the program is the important thing, the important part and message of today's webinar. Now, like I said, it doesn't have to be this very simple. Sometimes you've got a user who would like to, you know, affect what he's doing, what the scan should do. But at the same time, we don't want to overwhelm him with too many options the native panel offers. So we can create a very simple dialogues connected to OCR or, you know, document management systems, which is represented by the under button. Here, the DMS scan, where we can create some very basic dialogue for the user through which they can affect the output. And this is the main part of today's webinar because I will show you all these options where they can select the types of the documents, the types of processing that should be done, and all the things behind that. And like I said, this might be a little technical, 
but I will always explain those with the real examples and the real videos from the embedded terminal. And at the end of this part or this segment of my presentation, I will also show you the practical examples of how you can use it and how you can achieve all these things. So starting first with what the easy scan is. As part of today's presentation, I will just would like to do it the way the admin would do it. So I will try to create the easy scan buttons my users need, not only individual users, but also specific departments. So I will first start with the icon, the actual look, the description the user will see, and the access rights. I will explain all of those as we will go on. Then, we will set certain parameters like the resolution, density, size, orientation, and all these things. Important thing is uh, for you, especially for your, uh, for the technical guys of you, to understand is that the options that you see here, of course, are applied. But there could be a special ones which might not be supported by all the devices. Of course, we are trying to make sure that all devices do support them, but there could be some special options which some all the devices will not support, like, for example, the scan separation and stuff. So it always depends on the device platform if that option is supported. Now then, when we've defined the parameters, the layout, and who will see it, we have to define the destinations. Of course, I will speak about those in details as we will go on. And the last thing here will be about the advanced data processing. So that will be use of external code books, uh, external engines that will do something with your file, and again, the access rights, but this time it will be access rights to different components of these advanced settings and systems. Because not only you can set access rights for different buttons, but also within the individual settings that could be additional rights. So for example, one list of options might look differently for different users. So now all these settings are how the admin will see it. And what we would like to achieve through that is that the user, instead of all this, will get just this. One button he can press and get exactly what he need to the exact location and as fast as possible. So like I say, as we will go through the presentation, I would like to do it the way like I would do when I'm creating a new button and I will explain all the options to achieve uh, the full uh, profile that has multiple buttons with multiple settings and options for your users. So here we are, starting first with the layout and the access rights. Now, as you probably know, there is a special application available as part of the partner portal. So that way, every one of you can go there and download it for free. And that way, create your own look of the embedded. The other part you will need is the Mike UI, the uh, web administrator uh, console through which you can modify all the buttons. So we will start first with a theme editor because I would like to create my own specific buttons with different icons. You can just upload there any icon in JPEG or PNG and select any color and that way create your own embedded. Then in the web UI, we will create the button like you can see the example here. Provide all the translation and the details and as you can see, it's ready to work in the international environment because we can just provide as many translations and based on what the user will select as his native language, such interface will be shown. And then of course, we can also set not only the icon, but where the button will be seen and to whom. So the user is not annoyed by options he cannot use. Simply, if I'm not allowed to use the option as a user, the option is not even shown. So I don't even know that such option is available. So when it comes to these rights, you can apply a specific access based on the user group, individual user, group of printers, or even individual device. And of course, you can combine all these. So for example, that could be a special scan button, which will be available to your pre-sales department, your CEO, and it will be available only on one machine, which is located on the floor where these departments are located as well. So it's a pretty powerful tool, as you will see as we will go on. 
Now the next thing is that we would like to affect how the actual output will look like. So we, we have to set certain scan parameters. And let's start with those. This will be the first part where you will see also some practical example. Now, if you're creating a default button, the first setting you will get there that all these you know, options like resolution, format, size, density, skipping blank pages and others are set to default. Now, the default means that it will automatically use the default settings of your machine, which in the end can mean that on different machine, that will look differently. Just one button will you know, behave different way. Now, this is a possible for someone who would like to have different settings on different devices, but definitely it's not the recommended option. Much better is to provide here all the values. And if you would like to have different outputs on different machines, just set different buttons for that device. So let's do it. We set the resolution, color format, and all the other parameters. And you can see it how it will look like. So if the user logs in, he just goes there, presses the button, and waits till the scan is delivered. And he knows that he will get it to his email and 600 DPI, A4 color. He doesn't have to care about anything. It will be done the way the user needs it. Sometime, on the other hand, we would like to let the user to change the, you know, the file to change the output that will be delivered. Now, as you can see uh, at the settings, there is an option of a lock, and we can, of course, unlock certain options, like I did here with the format and the continuous scan, which means now the user can change those too. Now, as you can see, there is a full list of different parameters, and of course, the user does not have to search through it. All the options which we have unlocked will now be on top of the user's list. So we don't want him to scroll down through users, uh, through, you know, through options the user cannot affect. He will just get those that can be affected at the top of their list. So here, by pressing the button and waiting until it loads, as you can see at the top, there's the format and the continuous scan. So I can just change it to JPEG and initiate scanning. Pretty easy. And that way I can affect and get the JPEG instead of a PDF if I need it. Now the thing is that this might be a little bit annoying for some users because they just don't want to get into some table selecting options. They prefer to have straightforward buttons. So let's us look at the same situation but from a slightly different perspective because I can create the very same option uh, in the way which is much more appealing for the common user which is something they would really understand and for that i will first use a theme editor to create this specific look of the button and then i will create two different buttons each for the option i need so as you can see there is a one button uh, for the pdf and the other one for jpeg to make it you know better and more organized i can also create a folder and give it a scanning icon like here to see what is behind that, you can see here the, the little diagram. So that's a scanning that contains two buttons, the PDF and JPEG scans. And that's exactly what the user will see when he presses the scanning button. So like here, if I need a PDF, I don't have to go into any table. I will just hit the PDF button and scan it and get the exact output. Or I will do it the other way around, select the JPEG, and get a JPEG. Of course, instead of just having the, the, the icon in the form of a lattice, that could be any image you would like to upload. So that was where the parameters. You can play with them. You can create as many options as you want and create multiple different buttons. But that's not exactly what you would like to do because we want something a little bit more sophisticated. But before we will get to the sophisticated options, let me just focus on different scan destination MyQ Enterprise Scanning offers you. So we will quickly go through one by one. Starting first uh, with the absolute basics, which will be scanning to cloud. Now there could be objection from some of you that scanning to cloud is normally available on you know many machines and you can do it directly from a devices panel. Yeah, and you will be right. But it's not exactly uh, why we have it here. 
we don't want to just duplicate something. We would like to get additional value to it. And there are two things why you should not let the user to use these scan into clone storages from the panel. First, you are losing the control, especially in environments when you are working with sensitive data. You don't want the user to be able to scan to additional cloud storages. So here on your terminal, you will just limit those you would like to use. So for example, only one drive business, which because this one is used by your company, will be the one available for the user. The second option is the single sign-on or the one-time login only. Because if you are scanning from the panel, Every time you do the scan, you normally have to authenticate, which will not happen if you are using it through the MyQ. Simply do it for the first time and then the system remembers who you are and does the SSO with the cloud storage. And you can just press the button and scan directly into your cloud storage. Next to scan to email, scan to folder. Yeah, I believe that you already know it from any other solution, so this is nothing revolutionary, but I just have to mention it to make the list complete. So as you've probably guessed it already, it will automatically detect the user's email or user's folder based on their profile within the MyQ database and deliver the scan accordingly. The next, a folder and the FTP. Same situation as the previous one, it automatically sends it to the folder or even allows you to send it to the folder protected by password. We well, have two options, either we have a predefined one in the MyQ database or we will force the user to provide the password from the panel of the machine. And of course, the same situation is there here with the FTP. Next, quite a special one will be a scan to fax. And there are still few companies and especially organizations of government that require communication through fax. But some customers, they do not want to rely on some analog, old analog technology. And instead of that, they are using the email to fax service. And for that situation, Mike, you can step in. And instead of using the standard fax, which of course is as well possible, we can communicate also with these email to fax servers, allowing you not only communicate with them, but through the embedded screen, you can provide all the details that you will need to communicate and to be able to deliver the file to the fax of the, I don't know, customer or institution with which you have to communicate using the fax. Next one. I wrote a special one, an option of MyQ to make sure that your email and especially the attachment gets delivered every time. So normally, let me just demonstrate it here. If you're scanning to an email, it may happen that a file will be too big to become an attachment because of the limitations of your SMTP server. And that way can result in the unpleasant situation where the attachment gets erased. Now, with MyQ's secure link option, this will never ever happen again because you can set the limit for that on your uh, MyQ server. And when you're scanning to an email, and if the file is too big to be processed by your SMTP, it gets stored on your server, encrypted, and waits there till the user will just click on the link that got delivered to their email. There is another option that you can just use it directly so all the scannings to email will automatically become a link. It's up to you which of these options you will use. And now we will go for the advanced options because like I said, those were the basics, those that everyone knows. And now we will focus on the most important part of this presentation, the advanced destinations, variables, and all the options which can affect those. So again, we will be going one by one and I will just try to explain on examples how you can use them and how your customers can benefit from those. Starting first with the option to insert text. Now, instead of some generic answer or you know generic subject or name of the file, you can let the user to affect it. So for that reason, we will create a button where the system will ask the user to provide a file name. Of course, that could be some default one, so the user does not have to really provide any new one. And we'll just hit the next button and it will just use the generic one. 
But if the, we would like to change it, let's do it. Let's provide here a parameter the user can use and change the name of the file. In the end, it will look exactly like this. The user comes to the machine, presses the button, and instead of starting scanning, it will just ask him to provide a file name. So I can just use the keyboard of my machine, provide here the name, and then scan it uh, to the destination, which is behind the button. So like here, I'll provide here a name expenses 0.2. And when it's scanned and delivered, I will just get exactly file with this very name. So it will be expenses 0.2 PDF based on the settings of the button. Another way how we can use it is, for example, to change a recipient of a folder. So we've got here a button that is scanning to the folder and a mail at the same time. Why this? Because I would like to show you the option that we do not have to only change the whole value, but only a partial definition. So for example, for recipient here, that will be the insert for the username, but always they would have to use the hard-coded domain of a customer, so they cannot really print outside the network. The very same thing could be, for example, with a folder, or that will be some default, uh, you know, path to destination, and the user, by inserting some value, can only create a subfolder to which the file will be sent. And that's exactly what will happen when I will press this folder and email button. It will ask me to change the recipient name. And as you can see for the folder, there's some default value, which is the main folder, but I can of course change it to something else just by deleting what is there and providing the new value. And that will be it. The file gets delivered to my email and is stored in my personal folder. Now you may say this is not really practical because the user will be annoyed by it that they have to do it manually. Of course, there are a few more options, as you will see, which uh, require less interaction from the user, and they can just select a provided option. Now, before we will get these, there is one more thing which could be really important when it comes to the insert text option, and that's the validator. Because here we can provide, for example, some regex that will only limit us to uh, you know, provide digits or letters. So you can, of course, validate every input. And if it's not fitting what the uh, regex is doing, it will not be passed and the user will have to change it. Like here. So another option here will be a slight modification of the insert text option, and that's the password. An option which is designed to work where the folder that is protected by password. So the user has to authenticate. We can only let the user to provide everything. Or of course, like here in this example, the username is auto detected. And the only thing the user has to do is to provide the password to that folder. Showing here, I will just click here on the button, provide the password uh, using a modified insert text field, which is now encrypted and I can just get into the folder that requires an authentication. And of course, the rest is same. It gets scanned and gets delivered. Okay, one more option, uh, a very special one, and uh, we call it MyKey users. The important thing is that every user in a MyKey database always gets the email and a folder, provided you have synchronized those from external source or created those manually. So when we are on the machine, based on which button you, you know, select in, it will either use the email or folder of the user. So we can use this to get access to all the users on the system. So I can easily scan it, not only to me, but I can also select any of my colleagues and the file I'm scanning will be delivered also to those. So like here, scan to colleague, I'll press the button, it gives me a list of all the users within the system, so I can just select it. You can also see that I can mark one as a favorite, and then the file gets delivered. Or I can select another colleague, but because I cannot find him, I can use the search field because, you know, we're a large organization and I just don't want to go through the list. So if I would like to scan something to John Doe here, I will use the search field. And then 
and will be sent to both users I have selected. I can of course check it if everything is OK, and then it gets delivered to their either email or folder based on the definition of the button. What is then next? Now this is the most complex, or maybe a little bit complicated option, but if you understand it in the end, it's the most powerful one, and that's the codebook. Now the codebook is a tool through which you can not only create different destinations, but more important, you can create any value the user can select when working with a terminal. <coughs> I'm sorry for that. So like here, this is my little example of what the codebook could look like. Now important for you is to know that the codebook can be either manually created when you will type everything in, or it can be synchronized using a CSV, but not only synchronized, it could be just one time import, or it could be a scheduled task, which means if there is a list that should change based on some parameters, like for example, a list of customers, that's not a problem. The CSV list gets automatically updated based on a schedule. So for example, every midnight it gets updated from an external database, means the database has to export a CSV, which gets back into our system and updates the list. So every time the user uses such option, he gets the results they need. So let's look at the actual code list. Now what we have here is the item something which should be used as a variable within my queue. Then when it comes to that, that could be, I don't know, it could be an email. It could be a list of folders. It could be a list of strings for your document management system you're using within your organization or any other needed value you need to get the user and that the user can select. Then you are providing the name the user will see on the screen. And the last one and most important, the access rights. Because when it comes to lists, that could be just one list, which could look completely different for different users or even different departments. So exactly by just getting one list, you can define different options for the whole organization. This will look exactly like this. I will press the button. And in this one, I'm selecting a destination to which the file should be delivered. So by clicking here on that, you can see there are four different folders. I can use the search field. I can mark it as a favorite the very same way like I was able to do it with the user list. Simple as that. And now my file gets delivered. Now two more options when it comes to code books. Now the one we showed you, uh, that was the manual one or the one imported through the task scheduler. But there are a few more. You can of course get anything from your LDAP server. The only thing you have to define are the attributes for the title, meaning for what user will see as part of the attribute and the value that you would like to use. So for example, like here, it could be the name of the user and the hot folder uh, to be able to scan to folders of all users. Now this information then gets synchronized with your LDAP and cached by the system of MyQ. Every time user comes to the machine and presses the button, this selection is provided to him and they can easily scan. Another option is then to synchronize your personal address book with the Exchange server. So if you would like to scan, for example, to your colleagues or your VIP clients, it's not a problem. You can just press the scan to email button and you will get your personal address book from the Exchange server. And that's it. What next? There are a few more options which you can use which are used for different options and especially as we will go on, you will see why these options are included because there are parameters of the users like the username, full name, email, scan storage, basically the things that are uh, in a database defined about your user. The very same thing is there about your device. So if you need any of these things within your system to be used somewhere within the scan, you can use it. Now these are really handy, especially when you are using the scan to DMS, as you will see on one of the following slides. So I will just not, you know, emphasize upon these. I will not just explain all the stuff you can use because that will be done on the slide uh, that follows this one. 
last option available as one of the advanced is the yes no option simply you can create a question something the user has to decide like for example what will happen with your file like here if they would like to archive the file and they just have to say yes or no a simple option which could be pretty powerful now the next thing on our list will be the dms connector stuff the thing is, MyQ does not have its own DMS, but it can communicate with many DMS software on the market. And the way they do it is through a special XML file. It can auto-generate when the file is scanned. So starting first here with the embedded terminal, and that's a video which you've already seen on one of the previous slides. I would just say, I would like to archive the file. I'm selecting that this is my personal expense, and I would like to send it to financial department. Important thing is that this does not even have to affect the direct folders, but instead of that, it can be a part of the file that the DMS will get. So when you're scanning, the file gets first, you know, stored in the server job repository together with this set of settings, options, whatever you've selected or provided on the machine, including other parameters like you've seen, the user details, the device details, everything. Now this set of options then gets automatically set and modified into the XML file. And as you've probably guessed, there is a DMS hot folder to which these two files are delivered, the actual scan and the XML, which the DMS can analyze and then based on what's been found, it can deliver the file to all the locations, options, you know, uh, processed by OCR, processed by other things that are needed. So through a very simple XML file, you can get a lot of that, a lot of things. Another option which can be included in the easy scan is the OCR. Now, at the beginning I said, we're not using an external component. This will be actually the only one I would like to include because it could be pretty handy. Now, the way it works, it really cooperates with the MyQ server. So when you're scanning something, it goes to MyQ, gets processed by the OCR, and of course, it gets delivered. And as you've probably guessed, we can use all these nice options, selections, codebooks, all these things I spoke about can be used together with the OCR engine. And how? Pretty simple. It works on a principle of a hot folder. So when you're scanning something, it goes to your MyQ server, which stores in a special in folder where it gets to the OCR, gets back to the out one, and back to the more MyQ server. Sorry, that was a pretty quick one. Which means once the MyQ server gets the file, it can then apply all the rules, options, settings, which we have selected on the embedded screen. Now, when it comes to the OCR engine options, there are a few as well. There is a free MyQ OCR, which will just give you only the basic searchable and editable PDF, but sometimes this will be enough and it's in free. So you can just install it and uh, let it work together with the MyQ Easy Scan. There is another option that you can use any of your own engines. So if you've got an OCR in the company, you can just simply make it part of the easy scan just by using the hot folder. Now there's actually one more option and that's the last one, the option which I will not really explain in details, and that's the MyQ Ultimate, which allows you some advanced data processing, automated workflows and stuff. Now, why I will not explain it? Because this is a topic that requires a lot of time, time which we do not have today, and we will definitely mention it in one of the following webinars, when we will really focus on the options which you will get when you're using the Ultimate. Now, after we've been through the technical things, through all the options my QEasy can have, we have to go to the promise part, the practical application demonstration. For this part, I've prepared four different profile of four different users. And I will just first explain the options that are using, what they need to do in their daily life, and then I will show you how it will look like. So here we are, first starting with our office manager. 
This is a small company where the office manager works as an office manager at the same time a little bit as an assistant of our CEO. So our lady has a lot of work to do. Starting first, uh, she should be able to scan to all the folders of the colleagues. So after the meeting uh, with the boss, she should be able to, you know, modify all the files and send them over to all the colleagues. So we've got here a special button that just do that. At the same time, we are really uh, worrying about the security. So for that reason, when it comes to operations, it will select it from the list, providing a list of all options, scanning to folder. But of course, the uh, folder must be protected by a password. So our office manager has to provide a password to get access to those folders. Sometimes, because we're using a lot of contractors, we need to get instructions to them as well. So again, another button. And in this case, we'll be using a codebook that is synchronized using a task schedule. Why it should be synchronized? Because, you know, we're a dynamic company uh, working with, you know, a lot of operators, a lot of contractors, and that list may change. So we have to make sure that list is updated every time we need it. So we will be scanning to the email based on a list that gets updated every single day. And sometimes our office manager has to scan also some files to our CEO to make sure that he's ready for his meetings and that he gets the material he needs. So again, that will be scanned to my email, but also scanned to boss's email. So I'll get a copy, but also uh, boss gets the one they need. And sometimes we need to highlight that this is something important our CEO has to focus on. So we will be able to change the subject of such email to really highlight that this is an important thing. And, you know, it might happen because we're managing uh, an office, the whole office, which also works with our sales guys. Sometimes something happens with the cars they use for the daily business. So we have to contact our insurance company, but they're only using fax. So that will be a special fax button, which will send it to the fax server with a manual address input and regex validation that we are doing it right. So as you can see here on the embedded, four buttons are there. First one, sending to my colleagues. So I will select the colleague from the list here, uh, John Dow is ready. And to be able to scan to his folder, I just have to provide a password. So as you can see like that, selecting the user, providing the password, and the rest is done. Another thing, I have to contact our contractor and send him some file. Same thing, I will just select recipient from the updated list. Like I said, the list gets updated every night. As you can see, I can also mark it as a favorite. And that way, next time, our gamma and company will be always on top of the list. Once I'm finished with that, the presentation and some details about it must be sent to, the, to my boss, and I really would like to highlight it that this is something important. So I will just do it here on the list by just clicking here, providing uh, the new subject so our CEO is informed. And because our sales guy has broken the car again, we have to send some details to our insurance company simply by providing the fax number here on the screen, which gets checked. So if I'll mistype, I'll get informed about such a situation. I can e easily modify it. So that will be the office manager. And now a few more users on the list, like a key account manager. He wants to scan to the VIP clients. So he would like to get his address book uh, from the exchange server. And of course, there's a daily agenda, so I have to process all the things from my business trips, uh, you know, all the contracts I've done, all the personal expenses. I've invited some people for dinner. All these things received must be delivered. And this button does that because it's scanning to DMS and based on my selection, based on the things I've provided, it will deliver that to the right location. And of course, a very simple scan to my email is also sometimes useful. So starting first with the VIP clients, like here, I will just select the client from the list that gets updated from my exchange. And then I will change the subject if I want. Simple as that, and again, gets delivered. Sending them the offer. Right, here we are. 
Now the daily agenda will be a button which you've seen already before. Oh, sorry, too fast. Uh, it will be a simple button that uh, does multiple selections. Sorry, uh, I just don't want to get bad because it will start the beginning from again. Basically, is the video you've seen already. That's the video that covers the selection from the folder and different destinations. Now the next guy will be IT admin, which can secure a uh, link to uh, their email or use a panel scan. Basically, a guy which does not have any limitation at all gets that process by the OCR. So when we are here, he can scan to the uh, secured link and select that. This time, he would like to have that process that by an OCR, and he would like to get a PDF output. So like here and gets that scanned. Now, when it comes to panel scan, that's a special thing. I don't think that we have to really explain it here. That will be a scanning from the standard panel of the device. And then a pool receptionist, a guy who does not need much, but that way he can get a very simple embedded chance with a scan to email and a scan to folder. And the last thing I want to mention here in the presentation, and those are special and scan commands. Now the special scan commands are needed sometimes in a case that you've got a machine which does not really support the easy scan. I know it's not a common thing, but sometimes could be helpful. So if you've got such a machine which is either not supporting the easy scan or is controlled by an external panel, you can simply use the special commands that will do what you need. I'm sorry, a uh, little problem with my microphone here, but I'm right back. So what this is about, there are special commands which you can create as part of your address book within the MFD. So that could be the email one, and that could be another one which will be for your folder. So that way, if every time the user scans to any of these response, Mikey automatically knows that it should use either the user's email or the user's folder to deliver the actual file. Simple as that, straightforward. Now, one more thing, it can of course work also with the OCR. So if you are using the OCR engine, you can use also special commands for this. And then if all this was not enough for you and for the needs of your customers, there is also one more thing, which is MyQ Ultimate, to which we will just now provide a very sneak peek. So basically what it is about is about a smart workflow that can be working on your device. By selecting those, the user gets access to additional options like some advanced OCR and data capture, the zone recognition, barcode recognition, automatic form processing, and other stuff which you can use. But that will be, you know, one more option, an option which would require its own webinar, so we will not mention those details now. And that's also pretty much everything I wanted to mention as part of today's webinar. Now it's a time for the QA session, so please do not hesitate to use the QA button, which is probably in the top right corner of your screen to send us the question. Now as part of the QA session, I just would like to do one more thing. Now, as you've seen, the title of this webinar is complex does not mean complicated. And as you've seen throughout the webinar, I've created four different profiles with a lot of options, settings and stuff. And I just would like to demonstrate here that complex really does not mean complicated. So we will have uh, enough time for the QA session where I will just run here a video in which I will be setting all these options to show you how much time it actually took me to prepare them. So now it's time for your questions. And as you can see, there is a video where I'm setting all these profiles, icons and stuff. Unfortunately, my video got stopped for some reason. I don't know why, but what I wanted to show you as part of this video is that the whole setup took me only 
13 minutes and 15 seconds to get all four profiles. So again, that the message behind that, which was meant, was that the complex really does not mean complicated, because to get all the options you've seen as part of the presentations can be easily created uh, in very short time and do not require a much of a knowledge. Now, like I said, if you would like to learn more about this, in the following days and weeks, uh, videos describing all these options and settings will be available as part of the training center. So I definitely would like to encourage you to go there and check them. If still you will have some more questions about any of the topics covered today, do not hesitate and contact our pre-sales at presales.mikeusolution.com or uh, just re you know replace the pre-sales with the support to contact our teams of technicians. Thank you for being with us here today and see you next month.